the EZ bar or the EZ curl bar cable press down. One of these different types of bars in different gyms. I like this one the best. It's easier on my wrist. You can use the straight bar as well, which is more readily available in most gyms. In this one, they do have the option of a bar like this. I don't give a shit what you call it. Easy curl, EZ bar, whatever it is. So set this up pretty high. Again with this, there's so many different variations. You'll see so many different people doing it in a variety of ways. I'll explain. There's this one where people step over it and they do this kind of bullshit. There's this one where people are stepped too far back and they're doing this thing with it over here. Um, people step into it and they keep it close to the body and they're pressing like this. There's all sorts of different variations. I'm not saying they don't work, they do work. I think the way I do it is the most effective way. And when I mean effectiveness, I don't just mean what's gonna build the most muscle mass. Yes, this for me does build the most muscle mass, but effective in the sense where it's also very safe to do, so a less risk of injury. The range of motion is the best, and you're not gonna get any problems with your shoulders or your elbows or anything like that as well, because especially when it comes to a press down movement, a lot of people don't know that this is one of the main causes of tendonitis. Everyone thinks, oh, it's bench pressing and other stuff, but when you're directly training triceps, if you're just off a slight inch here and there, well, never mind an inch, you could be off a millimeter and you're gonna get injured. So this is the way I do it. And also another thing as well, I will note, I've never trained arms ever on their own. I've always had decent enough arms. So I always do arms at the end of say, any pressing days. So when I do a chest session or I do a shoulder session, I'll always include some arms with that. And in this case, in the pressing day, it's always gonna be triceps. When it's back, I'll just include one or two exercises of biceps. So cables, set up high, get the straight bar or the easy curl bar on it. And what you wanna be doing is step away from the station a little bit, keep your knees a slight bit bent. And what you wanna do here, this upper arm stays fixed like this. We don't want the upper arm forward and we don't want the upper arm back. The upper arm needs to be, the elbow needs to be directly below the shoulder. Grab the bar, pull it back here, keep everything tight and tucked, and we're pressing down. As you can see here, I'm not going all the way down. It's not 100% contraction at the bottom. It's about an 80 or a 90% contraction. So up all the way as far. Now this is the max range of motion as my body allows. I'm not doing this because then my shoulders are moving out of the, sorry, my elbows are moving away from my shoulders. So I wanna keep it underneath my shoulder, keep everything fixed and locked, and I'm pressing down around 80 to 90% of the lockout. And because the weight's light, it looks a little bit fast over here. With this, I try and aim for about 15 repetitions on the heavier sets, around about 12. So I've done a warm up set there. Like I mentioned, I always do this at the end of any pressing movements or pressing day as you want to call it. I don't do push pull legs, but when I do shoulders or chest, I'll always do some sort of tricep exercise. Either it's this, either it's dips, or I could do some kickbacks or something like this but this is my staple exercise right now. I used to do a lot of close grip bench pressing. I also used to do a lot of skull crushers. Over time, don't do them as much, even though they are very effective. And they are actually a lot more effective to, than this for building muscle mass. But that is not my main purpose at the minute. I wanna stay fresh, keep my elbow joints nice and healthy. So I always do this. Very easy, rest period, no more than two minutes. Go straight back into it again. Keep your knees bent, chest kind of like concaved in a little bit. We don't want to pull the chest back and out. We want to keep it tucked in, elbows tucked in as much as possible from the front. And we're just going straight down like this. So if you want to get a few extra reps out of the top here, you can use a little bit of momentum at the top, rest it, swing your body a little bit and squeeze those extra reps out. It's not advisable if you're a beginner, you're a bit of an advanced lifter like myself. We've been doing this a long time and you know exactly where the bar is. You're not going to get injured. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. 
you can use a little bit of motion at the top to just start that repetition so remember where the bar is we're just going to restart it and use that you know one or two inch momentum to get the bar all the way down and make sure you're doing this safely of course when it comes to triceps and biceps not very often you're not going to get injured so you can use a little bit of body english or a little bit of momentum when you're doing these kind of exercises now when it comes to weight on this exercise don't go crazy heavy always aim for 12 to 15 repetitions which is another thing that gives me a good guide that if i only did eight repetitions on this particular exercise i know it was way too heavy for me i shouldn't really be doing it so anytime the, when i set the weight and only look what i'm doing every machine's different so over here it says 50 is that kgs is that pounds who gives a shit i know at 12 repetitions it's giving me a good burn so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go straight back into it again So these are those extra repetitions I'm getting again at the top. There you go. That's it. Nice and safe. Safety is the key. No point getting injured doing something like this. If you're going to get injured, well, the only time I would say it's okay to get injured, well, it's never okay to get injured, but if you were doing a powerlifting meet or if you were getting paid a lot of money to do bodybuilding or if you was, you know, going for a competition somewhere, then I would say, okay, fucking go for it. And I'm sure you're going to get compensated. If you're in the gym like me, just training, going about normal day-to-day -day shit, no need risking it. Do what you can, train to your best ability, and make sure when you finish the gym, like uh, this is my last exercise, when I leave the gym now, I'm not knackered. I'm refreshed, I'm energized, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna go eat some food, and I'm ready, ready for the day, even though it's near the end of the day. So I'll go a little bit more heavier than that. I'm gonna go up to 57.5 now. So when it comes to arms, there's not really a lot more to do other than the basic technique and just keep on hammering the same old technique over and over again. There's not many teaching points like deadlifts. I mean, I could get a, a decent level deadlifter and, and, and get him to deadlift and I could pick a part or maybe he should do this. Maybe he should change the angle of his feet. Maybe he should change the angle of his hand placement from the bar or maybe he should do it with a bit more speed or look to this bay or look up, keep his chin down, keep his chin up, all this shit. When it comes to fucking triceps, it doesn't really fucking matter. It doesn't matter where you're looking, left, right, look in the mirror if you want, look down if you want, look up if you want. These things don't fucking matter, especially when you're training arms. So remember, there's a time and a place to be switched on and focused. And there's also time and place not to be relaxed. I'm not saying do your fucking triceps completely chilled out and completely relaxed and have no fucking care in the world of getting injured. Be switched on. But there's a different mindset that comes when you're doing deadlifts or squats or bench press to when you're training arms. Because arms are supposed to be a very, very small body part. And if we trained arms like we did every single other body part, I don't think our arms would be as big as we've made them today. It's just because arms are, you know, something easy to see in a t-shirt or a vest. I think people have like the idea of having big arms. But if we trained every single thing collectively together with the same intensity, I don't think our arms would even be this big. So last set here now, same technique, nice and easy. Remember at the bottom, it's not a complete contraction. You're cutting short about 80, 90%. As long as your muscles doing the work, there's no need to squeeze that tricep at the bottom. You're not on a stage posing, you know? And as you can see, I'm still talking while doing this, which just goes to show that it's not one of those intense fucking sets. It's triceps for fuck's sakes. It's not bench press, you know? Come and talk to me after deadlift, I ain't gonna be chatting. When I'm doing a fucking five rep deadlift, I'm not gonna be talking like this casually. Triceps, very simple. Get the technique right. Make sure the bar's setting the perfect path. Make sure your body's aligned correctly. Don't be looking around left and right too much. Keep a little bit of focus. If you do this correctly and you've built up this, these motor units over the years, then yeah, like me, you can be talking. I won't advise talking through the set. I'm only talking so I can explain to you guys how this works and if you like videos like this subscribe to the channel share it comment down below give me a like and if you want training programs trt protocols head over to fadihussein.com <laughs>